Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit rogers.com today. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Welcome back, everyone. We are now joined by Brad Glenn, Executive Director of LifeWise, formerly known as Channel. Mm. Brad, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me again, Laura Bell. So now you're on the couch under a new name, no longer Channel, now LifeWise. Do you mind telling me a little bit about that change? So last week we announced a change from Channel, which was our name since 1989. And of course, Channel was the Consumer Health Awareness Network, Newfoundland and Labrador. And the focus of that name was largely about the fact we're an organization of people with lived experience of mental health issues, mental illness and substance use issues. So myself and all 33 staff members all identify as that. But over time, as the organization has evolved, we're consumers, we're peers, we offer frontline peer support services. But we ultimately believe our lived experience is what makes us who we are as an organization. And we feel that life wise speaks to that. The wisdom that we've gained through the ups and downs of living with mental health issues or substance use issues have made us wise. And that's how we're able to offer effective frontline peer support services. And that's also how we're able to advocate for people with lived experience and further discussions in our province that promote destigmatization and positive conversations about mental health and mental wellness. So we're now in the midst of Mental Health Week and the theme for this year is empathy. Now how does that impact the work that you guys do at LifeWise? It is really a central thing and, and the thing about empathy is it's that ability to to feel and be with someone else as they're experiencing something. And our peer supporters who do frontline work are experts at being empathetic with others. And we believe that our own stories are what help inform that empathy. So if someone calls our warm line, one of our peer supporters may not have had the exact same experiences, but because of that connection of the ups and downs of living life with a mental illness or a substance use issue, we're able to empathize so quickly, so easily, and then we're able to use our stories to support them in their stories and how they're moving forward and solutions to their problem. Because ultimately empathy is about that. It's about being with someone and sitting with them as they journey through their life. It's not prescriptive. It's not about you need to do this. It's I'm here with you. I'm able to hold space with you. I'm able to listen to you and I'm able to support you in finding solutions for yourself. So when we talk about support with the rebranding, what can people expect in terms of services that are now provided by LifeWise? So our frontline peer support services are the same. Our English and French warm lines are still there for anyone who wants to call them. Our virtual groups and in-person groups are still there. Our virtual and one-on-one -on -one services are still there. And right now our focus is largely in ensuring that the public knows we're there as a frontline service. Of course, with the pandemic and everything that's happened in the past few years, we want people to know we're there. And the other thing we want to do is further our role as a thought leader and a conversation leader in this province about the role people with lived experience play in forming a mental health system, in the services provided by regional health authorities, in the ways workplaces support and understand people of lived experience, and just how to have conversations with family and friends. And going back to Mental Health Week and empathy, that's often the first step, is instead of looking at someone with judgment, instead of looking at someone for their flaws or for a diagnosis, looking at them empathetically and understanding what they're going through and being able to be with them. And we want to ensure that the public knows we're there, working with the current mental health system as a frontline service, and also advocating and supporting change that's more person-centered and more about all the amazing things people with lived experience have to offer. So as we're talking a little bit more about Mental Health Week, it's something that's really important to celebrate. What do you think is the role of, of LifeWise, no longer Channel, in the progression of mental health conversations and the forward movement for Mental Health Week? 
I think there's a couple things we can do. An area of growth I see for the organization is the ability to lift up other voices in our province. We've got a structure from here to Happy Valley Goose Bay, and we want to partner with people and groups formally and informally to lift up those voices. Because, of course, my voice and my colleagues' voices are our select voices of lived experience and we want to ensure those voices that maybe get a little less attention, maybe are a little more marginalized in the conversation, are lifted up. And I think the other role we have is as an organization with a 33 year history of we understand the landscape, we understand that there's been tremendous growth in the way mental health is spoken about in our province and there's been great work done by politicians, by private businesses, by people in the health sector and that there's still so much more to be done. So that it's a yes and conversation. Yes, you've done all this and that's great. And we need to assure we're not resting on that. We're not content with what's been done. There's still so much more to be done. And we wanna be active partners and positive partners at having those conversations in an honest way so that we're not just telling people what they wanna hear, but we're working in a solution-based way to further conversations that make life better for everyone in our province, particularly those people living with a mental illness. So as we've talked a little bit about before when you were here last time, we talked a little bit about what mental health and mental illness has been like for people living through the pandemic. As we move into what is being classified as living with COVID <laughs> and life post-pandemic, mm. What are you guys hearing from people who are calling in and availing of your services? Uh, I think that's a big struggle because I think, you know, that even debate of are we, are we moving into that, I think people living with a mental illness, we've seen two things. One, since the Omicron wave hit in December, we've seen an increase in our service use pretty consistently across the board that hasn't lessened. And we've also seen an increase in intensity of the calls to our warm line. So those people who are more frequent callers are maybe calling even more frequently. Maybe the calls are needing to be a little bit longer to support them. And the issues they're presenting with, whether those are financial, personal, relational, are having a bigger impact on them. So I think it's important that we remember as we continue to journey through this phase of the pandemic, we're all journeying at a different pace and we're all experiencing different things. And often the times it's people marginalized, people stigmatized who are feeling the negative impacts and they can often be left out of the discussion. And I think it's important that we center those people in the discussion because their needs often aren't being met by the solutions that are working for other people in our communities. So we talked a little bit about breaking the stigma and how important it is for us to do that. So if people are having a little bit of difficulty in having those first conversations, mm -hmm. whether it's about talking about their own personal mm -hmm. mental health or how to support someone in their life who's going through a mental health crisis, mm -hmm. what kind of advice do you have for them? I think the first piece of advice I would give as someone with my own lived experience is it's your story and you have a right to share as much or as little of that as possible with whoever you want to share that with. And it's a real honor and a privilege to share my story with other people and to hear other people share their story with me. And that's the first thing I would say is you need to honor yourself. And when you share it, share it bravely and share it proudly. And you're not responsible for someone, how someone receives that. Those conversations are often difficult for people to hear the first time and be generous with someone. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Give them time to process. And if you're someone who someone comes to sharing their story for the first time, be an active listener. Sit in the space. Don't need to have all the answers. Be comfortable and be happy with the fact that that person trusted you, because that means it's much more likely that a second conversation is gonna occur and a third conversation is gonna occur. And that's how meaningful change and meaningful growth happens for people is that continued dialogue. So we've talked a little bit about what it's like when we're sharing those stories one-on-one, -on -one, mm. but what about when we're working within a workplace? How can workplaces show more empathy for people who are either struggling with their mental health or mental illness or just create a more inclusive and welcoming space? I think for me, working in my role, of course, I, I have to marry both of those things and that I'm a person of lived experience, but I also have a workplace that I'm responsible for. And I think there's three things I would say. The first is that workplace wellness and cultures that are conducive to positive mental wellness aren't superficial. And I think you see, unfortunately, some workplaces do the superficial thing, but the underlying policies, the underlying human resources work doesn't support that. I think the second piece would be that 
being understanding and empathetic doesn't mean there isn't accountability. And one of the worst ways we can stigmatize someone is by not holding them accountable because they're going through something. And then the third part of that is, is that we can be supportive as we're holding someone accountable. You know, you struggled to meet this deadline, we need to fix that, we need to remedy it. How can we support you in that? There seems to be something on the go, there seems to be some struggles happening. Do you need to talk? Do you need our EAP program? Is there anything we can do for you? And I think that marrying of accountability and support is something that workplaces need a lot of help with because it's not intuitive. It doesn't come naturally and it doesn't match regular workplace cultures or traditional workplace cultures in that, that we need to get our job done and we need to make sure people are well enough to get their job done. And a toxic work environment is such a big trigger for so many people living with mental illness. Before we let you go, do you mind sharing the number for the warm line, both French and English, so that way our viewers know it if they need it? I would love to. So our English warm line is 1-855-753-2560. And our French warm line is 1-833-753-5460. And they're both open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. for anyone who'd like to call and speak with a peer supporter. Thank you so much for talking to me and letting us know a little bit about LifeWise's rebrand. And it's been a pleasure. And thank you for celebrating Mental Health Week here. Thanks so much, Laura Bell. And we will be right back, everybody. It all started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up. Creditors were calling. Jane's and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was going to stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just the beginning. A chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosworthy.ca. It was our 35th anniversary. To celebrate, we were on our way to Mama Rosie's where we had our first date. That's when we heard <laughs> coming from the radio. So we stopped and listened. It helped us get to safety. So when I think of I think of our anniversary, because now we have even more to celebrate. And welcome back, everyone. I'm now joined by Kimberly Yetman Dawson, CEO of CMHANL, the Canadian Mental Health Association of Newfoundland and Labrador. Kimberly, thank you for joining me. Thank you very much, Laura Bell. It's nice to be here. So, to let our guests know a little bit of who you are, since you are now the new CEO of CMHANL, many people might not know who you are, so do you mind letting them know? Sure. So, I was born in Grand Falls, Windsor, went away to school in Ontario, and I went to university, and I met my husband. We went to Aurelia and had two kids, and then I came back here for a job about 15 years ago, and I spearheaded the Housing and Homelessness Network of Newfoundland and Labrador, and uh, then I moved on to empower the Disability Resource Center as their ED, and five months ago, I well, about a year ago, I started the process for the interviewing for the CEO of CMHANL. And uh, lucky enough, I've been here five months. And uh, as someone with lived experience that has a mental illness, I think it's important as a leader of a mental health organization. And I'm very proud of the team and what we've accomplished so far. I'm big shoes to fill in, in John Abbott leaving, but I'm excited about the future. So we are in the midst of Mental Health Week, and the theme for Mental Health Week this year is empathy. Now, what does that mean to CMHA as an organization? Mm -hmm. I think it's about being real with each other, admitting when you're not okay. You know, it's okay not to be okay. It's about talking about mental health, even when you don't understand it. Um, it's about caring. It's about not judging anyone. It's about being real. And I think more than ever now during the pandemic, I think it's important that we do check in with our loved ones and our colleagues and our neighbors and people that we care about just to see how they're doing and also to check in with ourselves to see where we're at with our own mental health. So as an organization, what does CMHA 
do within the province? So our role is to strengthen programs and services for people that have mental illness. So we have two programs that are direct service. We have an at-work program that provides employment opportunities for people and wage subsidies. So we'll help people that have a mental illness with their resumes, with their interview process, and uh, help them get jobs, really. And we also have a wage subsidy that go th goes with that. That's a federally funded program. We also have our justice program that's funded by the provincial government. And that's a program that has us working with men in His Man Her Majesty's Penitentiary. And we work with them, and we get them supports and services so when they get out, they can become reintegrated into the community. So that means housing, it means food, it means support services. Quite often, um, when you're in the, the jail, you have lost your contacts and your supports. And so it's important when you come back out that we can reintegrate you so you don't reoffend. And so I know there are a couple offices for CMHA within the province. So those are located within Grand Falls and out in Stephenville. So what services are provided in those two offices? So we have regional man managers right now, one in Central and one in the Western Coast. And they do public relations for us. They do education and training. They sit on committees and advisory boards around mental health in those regions. And we're also hoping to have somebody in Labrador shortly as well. So we talked a little bit about, you said they provide training and education. What is training and education for MCMHA? Oh, it's a huge aspect of the services that we provide. And you can actually go on, we have a library of resources available on our website. But it really is meeting people where they're at and what their needs are in regards to training. So there's workplace training, psychological health and safety, there's assist training, there's um, workplace mental health, and I just finished workplace mental health, and I think that everyone should take a mental health first aid course. It's just like first aid, except for mental health, right? And I think that's what's so important, that we have more people that understand and that are educated and can, can talk openly about mental health, just like you're talking about having high blood pressure or diabetes, that we're open about it. So you said a program called ASSIST. So what is ASSIST? ASSIST is Applied Suicide Intervention Training. Okay. And it's for people that want to help others that are thinking about suicide or that are struggling with their mental health. And we provide that training. It's an in, it's in, in-person training. Some of the training that we do is virtual, so you can take it from anywhere in Newfoundland and Labrador. But that training in particular is for, yeah, it's in-person. Okay. So what is CMHA doing in order of terms of breaking stigma that surrounds mental health and mental illness? I think it's about talking about mental health and mental illness in an open manner. It's about um, educating um, policy makers in regards to what's going on with lived experience. We Last year we did a report called Embracing Experiences where we had 40 lived experience people with mental illness talk about their experience with the system and how we could improve it. So I think it's about um, doing a bit of education, advocacy, policy work, but it's also about delivering programs and services and being responsive to what the community needs and being able to articulate that at the tables that we sit at. So if someone reached out to CMHA right now just because they're in the middle of a crisis or experiencing some kind of mental health related difficulties, what can they expect to happen when they reach out? So we don't do direct clinical services, so what we would recommend is that they call one of the lines. Either they would call LifeWise, which was Channel before, or if they're in a mental health crisis. Right now the province announced that you can call 811. So it's not a long number that you have to remember. You don't have to go on the website and try and navigate it. You can just dial 811 and there's a, a nurse available that has uh, crisis intervention training that can support you. So when we talked about Mental Health Week and the theme being empathy, what is the importance of being empathetic to people who are either living with mental illness or for us ourselves who are just have mental health as a whole? Mm -hmm. I think, well, everyone has mental health, so I think we need to know that um, we can struggle at times. Everyone can struggle with their mental health, and it can happen to anyone, a politician, a musician, an athlete, a dentist, a student, your neighbor, your sister, your mother. And um, I think having empathy shows that you're being non-judgmental, that you are listening, that you are affirming that that person has those feelings. They may not understand them and they may, they may become more understanding of their feelings when they articulate them. I find when I talk about how I'm feeling, it makes more sense and I can rationalize it better. So I think having empathy is about 
not being judgmental and the importance of being able to talk about it openly and to and to be able to do check-ins with people. We do check-ins on how are you feeling? Oh, I have an upset stomach. Well, I can identify with that because I've had an upset stomach. Well, are you struggling with your mental health? Well, I can identify that because I've struggled with my own mental health and I've been there. So if families and teachers and edu other educational professionals are looking to reach out to support mental health trainings within their schools or their faculties, what are things that they can do when looking with, to CMHA? Oh, I would definitely refer them to our website at cmhanl.ca. There is a ton of resources available. There's training available. We also are well networked with CMHAs across Canada. So we have resources from BC and Ontario, our national office provides resources as well. So we're always delivering, tr trying to deliver up-to-date training and education to people and keep our resources on our website up-to-date. Okay. So what are some of the best ways to interact with CMHA? Would it be calling in or social media better to connect? I, any way is good. You can contact us on our website through our email, office at cmhanl.ca. You can call our office at 853 you should know that number up by heart, right? 753 Seven, five, 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 <laughs> Thank worry. you. Not a problem. I never call myself. 753 <laughs> No worries. And yeah. so if for viewers who are watching right now, what is one core thing you want them to know when it comes to mental health, mental illness, and mental health week? Mm. I would say not be embarrassed by your mental health struggles. That um, there, and you're not alone. I think that's really important because I think when people are thinking about their own mental health, you often feel isolated. And, and nowadays with the pandemic, more than ever, I think people are feeling isolated and anxiety. So I think it's realizing that you're not alone and there are lots of supports available for you out there. And it's just about reaching out and talking about it. So are there any exciting things going on for CMHA this year that you think our viewers would be interested in knowing about? Yes, we have lots of events going on uh, across the province and you can register for them virtually and you can check out all the resources at our website at cmhanl.ca to log on to our virtual, we have some lunch and learns going on, we have a movie night going on in Stephenville, we have a release going on, so there's lots of events happening. We also have uh, local businesses that are participating in points of sale for us, so they're asking for donations, so the Newfoundland Chocolate Factory, the Battery Cafe, the Jumping Bean, and Moto Yogo, Yoga. Perfect. So, and funds raised are going back to supporting services within the province? Yes, so that funds stay locally for sure and they would be dedicated to education and training for people in Newfoundland and Labrador. Perfect. Thank you so much. I do have one thing to talk about because I know there is something special happening for CMHA this year yes. with the Tickle Swim being its 10th anniversary. So do you mind telling people a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so we're really excited. Uh, yesterday I actually had an opportunity to do a proclamation at the City of St. John's and uh, acknowledge our Deputy Mayor, Sheila O'Leary, who actually started the Tickle Swim 10 years ago. So we're celebrating this year and this year we have a title sponsor in Mun Insurance and the Tickle Swim, we're hoping, fingers crossed, will take place the first week of August, uh, depending on the weather. And we're currently looking for sponsors and for swimmers. And yes, we're really excited about this event. It's a huge event for us and a, and a big fundraiser for us as well. So when we talk about mental health and mental illness, there's still a little bit of stigma when it comes to workplaces. Mm -hmm. So what does something that CMHA is doing to support businesses and organizations when it comes to breaking that stigma? Well, we provide training, workplace mental health training, to organizations or businesses if they would like that. Um, and it helps support them and their employees in talking about mental health, having tools available. Um, I think it's also important to have policies that are accommodating and inclusive as a business or an organization. Um, you know, someone should be able to come to you and say, I'm not feeling well because of my mental health and be able to be accommodated for that. So I think it's about a business and, and I think with the uh, disability office and the uh, Canadian wise, them coming down with um, disability legislation, I think it's important that businesses do understand mental health and the importance of checking in with their employees. Um, you know, recognizing the signs, is, is someone coming to work 
disheveled or uh, are they abusing uh, substances? You know, being able to talk about those things and, and being able to recognize the signs of mental illness and mental health struggles. And I think it's also okay to talk about your own mental health struggles um, as a supervisor or as a boss or as a CEO and admitting that, yeah, I'm struggling today, but this is what I'm gonna try to do to help. I'm gonna go for a walk at lunchtime or I'm gonna eat something healthy. Well, I thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. I can't wait to talk to you later to see about more things that like CMHA does in our province and within our cities. Thank you so much, and we'll be right back, everybody. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. It was absolutely amazing to get to sit down and talk to Brad from LifeWise and Kimberly from CMHANL. I'd like to remind everyone out there tonight, if you are suffering with mental illness or having a mental health crisis, don't be afraid to reach out. You are not anything to be embarrassed about, and your mental health is important. Happy Mental Health Week, everyone, and have a great night. about this program.